Hey there, Sunroom Toys Podcast. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I am excited today because I have a very special guest for you. Out of Slidell, Louisiana, I have Brandon Aubert of Left Hook Customs. He does some great work. I own two of his pieces, and I'm soon to own probably another hundred more. Uh, Brandon, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit to the podcast, let them know who you are and, uh, you know, what you like to collect. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, as Josh well said, my name is Brandon. I uh, go by the little alias of Left Hook Customs in this little community we're all love and enjoy. Um, I mainly collect Marvel Legends, and uh, that's about it right now, just sticking to my legends, you know? So Marvel Legends, that's a little fickle of a group there. Uh, how do you go about your collecting? Do you do most of your stuff online pre-orders? Do you stick to the Facebook groups, or do you uh, you have any tips of the trade for the guys out there just starting on uh you know as patience key that kind of thing well there's different methods that i take in like obtaining certain like key figures if i'm going about like to be honest with you if i want to guarantee myself something i'll go ahead and pre-order it but most of the time i like to take my son and i will go out and do hunts and we'll just see what's out there in the wild and uh you know that's the most fun about it like, getting out there and and having the thrill of the the hunt you know what i mean just like a hunter would bagging a deer i guess so that's my kind of take on it. But as far as, uh, I don't, I don't think I remember the last question you had. I'm sorry, buddy. And, and do you have any, uh, special tips for people to make sure that they acquire their stuff? And I think you kind of touched on that with the pre-order. Uh, you know, with the Marvel legends though, they're a hot enough item. It's meant for kids. We know that, but us adult collectors love them. And we have all kind of scrambled to get them as we go. There's some of these that are considered grails. Is there a grail that you have or that you've acquired? And how did you go about getting that? I know some people do eBay and all that. I mean, did you have a price point? Is patience key? What did you use? Man, that's that's a tough one pertaining to the grail figure thing because I only learned of that, like, getting into the cuss. I've only been collecting for about five years, so I'm not, like die hard like i gotta got i mean i'm into this and i'm really into it apparently i got a lot so i'm I'm into this like it's my passion now but i didn't know about the term grail until about two years ago after obtaining the blob figurine so i i always wanted that guys it's one of those guys i just had to have and price point wise i mean it was 200 bucks on ebay and i that was like the most expensive thing i had to date at that time and yes it was a very good thing to find it on ebay because nobody would uh get you know lose that figure if they had it on their shelf unless somebody was trying to sell it for a little more than it was worth on you know what i mean so that's kind of what you deal with sometimes if you want something you're gonna have to pay for it in this collecting game and that's the that's the beauty of it it makes it worth it to me i don't know i mean i don't do this for any kind of like future gains but when i see something going up in value it is exciting and i mean that would be anything if you have and you're collecting you spend your money and time on so yeah that's pretty much that i mean grail figures I mean, it's anybody you love. If you grew up loving a certain character and it's a certain make and model that you can't find or it's like old and you can't get it and somebody finally lets it up, you know, that's a great thing to get. Definitely. You know, I'm staring at my blob right now over on my little makeshift shelf that I have. And uh, my wife always gives me jokes about it, saying it looks more like Fat Bastard from uh, Austin Powers and stuff like that. But, you know, it. The Blob is a great one, and speaking of Build-A-Figures, that kind of leads me into the whole reason I kind of brought you in here. Uh, I've seen your Strong Guy Build-A-Figure, or Strong Guy Customs that you've made. I want to say for the past at least two years, I've seen you making different versions of it, and I've always meant to get one from you, and I just never pulled the trigger because I, you know, the money was tight at the time or something like that, but I knew when I saw that last one that I finally got from you, I had to have it. And uh, I, I told you earlier this week, our, the end of our trade will be done as soon as Entertainment Earth gets it to me. But I did get the cases processing. And uh, I want to thank you for being a customizer who's willing to work with people as far as prices. Because some prices are insane on customizing. And I get it because it's their time and effort and it's their art. And you guys end up loving what you're doing. But uh, that strong guy should be your way probably at the beginning of next week is when it should end up hitting here and it'll be on its way to you. But I appreciate you letting me get that custom strong guy. Now, that being said, you are a customizer. What got you into customizing these action figures? Well, 
basically to answer that, you kind of touched on it yourself there with the, the amount of money that some people charge at it. You know, I understand all the facets of it being, you know, time consuming, prepping, planning, art, you know, all the stuff that goes into it. The materials are the main thing. And then, you know, for me, <coughs> excuse me, I like to do little things to where I, I set it up to where I, I offer to where to keep the cost low. I'll have the person requesting the custom send me the base figure that we need, you know, and that to me takes the takes a heavy load off of it because most of the time when you're using when you're customizing, you end up using two or three action figures sometimes, you know, and that's where the cost can go into absorbing, like of course, just material paying for that figure, you know, and then you're tapping on paint, time, sculpt, everything else. But I, that's kind of what it was, man. I'd look at some things and I go, wow, that's cool. And then I get a price and it was like five, six hundred bucks. And I'm like, man, I can't afford that. I mean, it's awesome to me. It's worth it. But I don't know. I just try to keep it kosher to where people see that I'm not out here trying to, you know, I hate to say it like this, but I'm, I try to keep it affordable so everybody can have one, you know. And I don't think it's that special that it's going to just be where you got to pay a thousand dollars to have an action figure on your shelf for me, you know, I mean, right around a hundred bucks, you can get whatever you want. And that's kind of what I try to keep it at, you know, try to keep it affordable. And I do my best, you know, and I appreciate you giving me that, this opportunity to speak and let guys know, you know, it's out there. You just, there's tons of guys out there that'll work with you. I'm not the only one. And it's just part of the thing. If you're a human being and you understand, you know, it is what it is. We, I was more than happy to get that that thing from you, you know, for the trade. And that was kind of like what you're saying. You wanted that strong guy and I wanted the official release. So kind of one hand wash the other, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, not everyone thinks that way, unfortunately. And, uh, and that's one of the small reasons that I love, you know, hitting you up. And I know we've had some discussions and I'll get to that later about future projects. But uh, so you got into customizing because there's things that you wanted out there that weren't there and you thought, you know, why not do it? Have you always been artistic to an, an extent or is this just something that one day you just decided, hell, I want uh, an earthworm gem figure, which I've seen you made. I'm going to make it. And you just picked up tools and stuff and started working or, you know, what, what did you end up doing that got you into that process? What was the first thing you ever made? Uh to answer that question and to be honest with you man i've always been an artist to some degree whether i've like drawn pictures or comic like i always started off drawing like big old muscle guys reading comics and shit like that but uh for me is this pg or i can like get, let a you know language fly and i know no you can right, you well, go you know, ahead and let it fly gotcha. i'm just asking let it fly. you know kids you know <laughs> i know how it is so what it is man is uh what got me into it I started watching a bunch of tutorials by the late, great Glenn Webb and started watching his methods, you know, and I, it's really just something I started trying. I had a little collection going and I started looking at doubles that I had of certain things. And I said, well, maybe I'll just paint this guy a different color and see what he looks like, you know? And then lo and behold, man, it, it, I got some likes on Facebook and I said, well, let me try this. And it just started from there. I, I call myself the winging it creator because really, dude, I just grab it and go. I don't sit there and plot it out and hurt myself and crunch my creativity by trying to, like, you know, visualize something. I just let my hands go and I get lucky, you know, and I'm to be honest, I, I ask how a sculptor grabs a block of marble and pulls the statue of David out of it. I don't know how he don't know either. He just does it, you know, so that kind of aptitude with it. There's tons of tutorials and things on on youtube that we are all watched and some of us don't admit it but i watch them and i still to this day watch them so i mean there's all kinds of tricks and trades you learn by trials and tribulations as well but mainly you just kind of want to set a good foundation by learning how to prep a figure correctly because you know like paint rub is a thing that we as customizers fight and i don't think i'll ever completely win it it's like fighting cancer dude i mean you get pretty good at it but there's always going to be something touching something else. And that's the main bane in my creativity is like, I, I hate that. So to be honest with you, man, I've watched about a hundred hours of tutorials and it just started getting at it, you know, slowly building up my tools. I started off with a razor blade and a toothpick, you know, and started doing it like Glenn Webb did, you know, he always had a toothpick. So I started using a toothpick and then I saw 
artists using dental tools. So I went and bought a couple of things. And, you know, over the course of five years, I have a desk full of stuff I don't even really use other than a toothpick and a razor blade. So it all matters what you're comfortable with. There's all kinds of things to use. There's plenty of sculpting tools and things that work for certain things that a toothpick won't do. So, you know, we all we all work what we're comfortable with. You know, that's kind of what it what's cool about it, because you can create stuff with just a flat razor blade, man. It's pretty cool. You know, I like that. I like how you ended up mentioning other tools that, you know, you ended up with a desk full of items and you still went back to your original couple pieces. And to me, that seems like this might be something that once you get into it, it's like riding a bike. You don't forget it and you always find new ways. Uh, you touched a little bit on prepping a figure and that, you know, the paint rub is the bane of the customizer's existence. What is your breakdown for prepping a figure? Uh, if you don't mind just kind of walking me through the steps that you utilize. It, it, it all depends on very, like, of course, if you're making something for yourself, you're not going to go to the, the expense of, well, me personally, I'm not going to speak for any other guys to do this, but for me, for my own shelf, if I'm, uh, gonna make something for me as like a space filler and until hasbro makes an official release or if any time you know they do um i'll go ahead and do basic prepping techniques that just as far as joint i won't break down the figure completely i'll just go as far as like getting behind the kneecaps anything that's gonna bend and and move like mainly behind the kneecaps and in the front of the kneecaps and the elbows and behind the elbows it's kind of where I, I stick to the disc joints and stuff like that and take about a millimeter of material with a little dremel and just sand it smooth and if i run some paint over it and it doesn't and it doesn't go away after a couple of movements i just i'm, I'm happy with it you know but uh pretty much prepping yeah, a figure, and that's actually break a good down point. Some extensive well, I mean, and, and, you know, when you're doing like a commission and you know somebody's going to be moving around a, uh, a, a, I mean, a, a toy, but I don't, I don't like to see them as like moving it around and playing with it per se. I know when I have a custom and I only own one by my good friend, John Strand, uh, at Strand and Customs, he, we, he and I did a little switch and it's the only one I own from another artist. And I know I don't move it around and stuff. I just put him in a little cool pose and he's pyro's chilling where pyro's at you know so i i know they're meant to be kind of moved and photographs taken so when i do that i want to try to break them down and take them apart and man there's there's so many ways i mean i i tend to just drill a hole in their their little uh lat area and on top of the traps and just crack it with an ice pick but Sometimes you can get in there with a little screwdriver. A guy on Facebook, Zach Schultz, he has a little technique where you stick a little screwdriver in there and make a little twist, and, man, it pops right open. And, I mean, I've been doing that lately. So there's all kinds of different ways. You just want to take them apart and take a little material away, put it back together, and you should be good. That's pretty much what the, the technique is. You just take away so you can add more because you don't want to add more on top of something else because then it'll start rubbing for sure. So as far as taking away, there's like there's no there's no certain way. You know if you're doing too much and you know if you're not done enough. So there's a little gray area with that. So it sounds like you would have a whole lot of uh, reassemble, disassemble, reassemble, disassemble kind of stuff. And, you know, you mentioned posing the customs and that you kind of leave them in a vanilla pose. I got to tell you, I got this forearm in my hand right now, and I actually have been using them for some pictures. So I may be breaking your rule and posing them a little much. I have been cautious with the leg, like you told me. Well, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I have a policy as well with all my customs that I do. If something starts to rub or, or break, you send it back to me, I'll pay for the shipping and I'll fix it for free. So that's kind of one of the things that I want to pride myself in. I never really say. It's kind of like a hidden guarantee that I throw out there. But like I said, there's not too many people that have my stuff. So you you being one of the few that have them, and I do appreciate that interest in my art style. Everybody has their own style, you know, and I kind of like to stick to like, I guess I, I, I really have strong influence of Glenn Webb early work style. Like I like his work. It always kind of like I, there's the Mike De La Paz, the, the Dave Cardenas, the Loose Collectors. You know, these guys are like phenomenal with what they can do. And I, I look at those guys and I go, damn. I just kind of feel like kindergarten artist compared to that. But, you know, at the long, at the end of the day, I kind of see where that's where it's at and the, the price difference as well. Because if you're doing, if you're doing work like that, like those Titans, I mean, and they're, the name is known and they've been in the game for years, I can see them asking for what they ask for their work, you know, 
And that's kind of where I, I one day hope to be. You know, if I can keep evolving each figure, I try to I try to do something different or just take a little bit longer or you know what I mean? Just something to to know each time I do something, I'm trying to do it better than the last time I did something, you know? Yeah, and that kind of goes into the alternate versions that you've made or the updated versions of some of your stuff. And I, I saw the other day you had a post uh, with your Earthworm Gym up for sale. What inspired you making an Earthworm Gym? Because that thing was honestly straight fire. And it's because of the fact that I haven't seen anything articulated of Earthworm Gym. It's definitely something from my childhood. And uh, seeing it gave me that nostalgia and it had that grittiness to it that I see in your customs a lot that I like. You know, you, you tend to do like a little bit of a black wash on some of your stuff in certain parts and it makes it pop more to my eye. What inspired me, man, is I was a total earthworm gym geek growing up, man. And I, I just love the guy. I did a sculpture of him out of some, uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, that sculpy clay, that little pink stuff. I, I, I managed to get a nice looking sculpture done before I even really started doing customization work. Uh, and I did a really cool sculpture with some interchangeable heads on them. And it sold for a pretty good penny on eBay. And that's what told me, I said, if I could sculpt this guy, I could probably make an action figure of him one day. So lo and behold, man, I was just looking at a Savage Dragon figure one day and I just I just imagined an earthworm gym and then there it started manifesting, to be honest. I just drilled a hole in his head and the rest started happening, to be honest with you, man. <laughs> I don't I don't plan nothing, dude. I just look at something and I, I, I see it where it's not there. It's almost like if you draw and you're really good at drawing and you look at a piece of white paper, an artist can almost see what's there before he even puts the pencil on the paper. And that's kind of how the best way you can explain doing certain things. I mean, thank God that not everybody can do it. Or I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now doing this. You know what I mean? So I kind of feel cool like that, you know, but you can do it if you start. So there's all kinds of things. I mean, you're not going to be great when you first start, man. You should see some of the stuff I made. I, I mean, it looks like I gave a kid a crayon and said, go draw something on a figure. And it, that's what I started doing. But I'd say I'm about 100 figures into this now. So after about five or six, you'll start saying, man, I'm getting good. And it just keep, it starts rolling. And before you know it, you've made so many figures, you can't even remember the ones you've made. So looking back at my early work, I see a lot of stuff I'd like to go back and redo. Oh, man, that's a, an amalgamation of like... 10 different tries at making a strong guy you know what i mean so that was me trying to like put everything i had into one and to be honest there was that body that's it's built on was about three different strong guys to get it to that <laughs> so i don't know how it worked. i don't know how each time i just sanded away what i didn't like and i started adding more and it just started i just knew i had to get that one particular one the way i wanted it the way all the artists drew it i tried to make it exactly to those proportions and of course there's limitations to what you can do you know a piece of paper art is different than a three-dimensional object so i mean i just I, I try my best man and anything i do you know especially with this yeah i mean it, it definitely takes a lot of time i've tinkered with some customization myself and i'm staring at a uh, batman deadpool that i made i want to say 2017 and i can see the roughness in it but i still love it and it's definitely one of those i wouldn't pose i may take him and take him apart and sand him down and do it proper now that i've learned some things uh, currently i'm working on a zen pool is uh is there anything you're currently working on or no? I actually am. Uh, I'm just I'm working on a Jack Kirby for a guy and uh just other things, man. I got a couple of things on the deck. I don't like to overwhelm myself with like a series of things on my desk because then I start losing my creative juice on that one I'm working on. But of course, I got your your stuff I'm working on right behind this. I got some repaints going on. Uh just a lot of very various things to keep myself busy you know and the main thing about it is finding the it's not time it's like more or less the the oomph to get into it man it's not like i can just i don't jump up and say oh, i want to make action figures i do but then it's like when you start getting commissions and it's not your own thing you want to make it's kind of hard to do it for some reason for me and i don't know i still pull them off and i end up loving them in the end but it's not something initially that i go hey i want to make this it's kind of works that way for me most everything I see I make is something I go, hey, I want to make this. But then you get into this and you have people requesting things and you go, oh, shit, 
I don't know if I can deliver. And that's pretty much where I'm at with this Jack Kirby I'm working on. I guess he wants one to stand next to his uh, Stan Lee here on his shelf. So I'm working on a, a suited body trying to make a little dad bod on a belly, you know, out of clay. So it gets intimidating there. So, I mean, I'm doing my best and eventually it'll look like what it needs to look like. But that's pretty much on the on the workbench now. It's just a bunch of She-Hulk repaints and uh, that that Jack Kirby and some things for you on the horizon. So that's what I'm working on. Yeah, you bring up some repaints. I think you did them for a comic shop out by you, you were telling me. You did a bunch of God Dooms and uh, red She-Hulk, is it, or green? Yeah, I have a couple of reds, a couple of greens. I've yet to do. I've done red one red for them that looks pretty good. And I got another green on the bench that's been there for a few weeks, to be honest. I just can't find the the momentum to find my side. Once I do something multiple times, I kind of get stagnant of it. I know it sounds stupid, but he, he's patient and he's, he'll work with me. So he knows it's coming. It just takes a little while. But, yeah, I just got a, I got a couple of guys that are really cool in this, that my neighborhood. I'm, I'm blessed to have a, a toy shop and a comic book shop owners be my good friends. So. They ask me to do some things. I try my best, and I try my best to get it to them. Yeah, that's great, man. It's great when you have the local people hit you up, too. I mean, you are blessed to have that surrounding. I don't know how big Slidell is, but I know here in Gurney, we've only got about two comic shops, and they're not even in Gurney. They're about two towns over and 40 minutes apart. So it is what it is. But I would like to know, for the guys out there, let, let's yeah. get them some tips on clay and paints. So which clay and which paints are your preferred method? I know some people use the Walmart paints. Some people go out and they get the Citadel. I mean, do you have any that you prefer that you think work better? Um, that's all in the matter of what you're trying to do. I started off using Citadel Warhammer paints because I knew that they were good to being grabbed by, you know, using them for miniatures and Warhammer to, well, that I don't. Sorry, guys, I'm messing that up. I know there's a, a crowd of guys out there that want to like boot stomp me for messing that up. Uh, but those paints are really good for to being touched. You know, I, I like to use Vallejo. Certain certain times, I can't find anything. I'll go to my local Hobby Lobby and I will buy mostly all their Model Master acrylics. It's all acrylic. Sometimes I'll just use any the Walmart paints. I mean, I see people use those craft paints like that. And I, I just go, dang, how does that not just wash off or rub off when you touch it? Because I just use those types for uh, diorama working and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, painting and your um, as far as clay works, I mean, you want to always get like a two-part epoxy, something like a milliput, a good uh, starting um, material to use for custom working is milliput clay because it's cheap. And you can get it real fast. You can probably get it at like Walmart. I know I have it at Hobby Lobby, Lowe's, things not Lowe's, but any place that's going to be like your Michaels or art supply shop will have that on their little aisles. The better you get with that after you start experience, like learning that the less is more instead of slapping on some huge amount and like whittling down, it's, it's always less is more. Always remember that one. I started buying uh, Abe's two-part epoxy sculpt and it's uh, it's just really smoother. It's far, um, it's not gritty like Milliput and it's, it's a lot more expensive, but you get what you pay for, you know, and it takes away all that that sand and work that you can do because you can basically just lick your finger and smooth it out as opposed to having to wait for it to cure and then sanding it. So I prefer using Aves and even green stuff, but um, you want to stick with your paints being the good, the brand name paints, because, you know, once again, there's a slant, there's a saying you do get what you pay for as far as painting paint work goes. But when you're starting, your budget's kind of tight on it and you don't know what to do always go with you know what's best you know if if anything do go to your local uh art store and buy like uh model masters acrylic because that's what i mean even pounds nine even pounds uses that for his spider-man customs and they're like phenomenal so that's a high grade cheap or in like cheaper end in the spectrum of paints acrylic to use that's really good for action figures i mean but like i said there's a salad bar of choices out there man it's so much stuff you just have to trial and error and what works for you use it you know yeah definitely i know a lot of the guys they water down their paint before they utilize it is that something you do where you put like a little bit of paint and like two drops of water i know some guys have a science to it but that's one of my biggest struggles and i'm sure other guys would like to get more perspective on that part of it 
Yes, uh, that's a real important question that it takes, you know, unfortunately takes you making that error to discover that it just looks, it just looks a lot better when you take your time, you know what I mean? And like when you take your paintbrush and you, I mean, any kind of night paintbrush, I use paintbrushes from Walmart, the acrylic paintbrushes that are like $5 for a pack of them, you know, paintbrushes really don't matter as long as you, you use a paintbrush correctly. You take your paint and you dip it right in the paint bucket and throw it right on a figure. I mean, it's going to fall. It's clunky. It's going to rub instantly. Now, when you take like a little piece, a little chunk out and you dip it on the side of your palette, I, I prefer a wet palette and I just let it kind of absorb into the paper towel and I'll make a bunch of thin layers. Yes, it's time consuming. Yes, it takes way longer than you want it to take. But the overall effect is you're building up layers. And when you build up those tiny thin layers, it's just, it's more durable. It, I mean, of course, it lasts longer with being more durable, but it also looks better. It's also smoother. When you go out of the pot and you go onto the figure, you're going to see brush strokes. You're going to see all kinds of stuff, especially pertaining to the color white and yellow. Those are, I don't know, if, unless they're airbrushed on, they're the worst to try to paint without trying to do that method of very thin light coats but yes that's always something you want to do you want to take always water down your paint either that or use a little bit of alcohol alcohol can help uh make it dry a little bit faster to, to help you in between coats but those are little tips and tricks you learn just by watching youtube videos you know what i mean so i, I like i said i i often just keep my mouth shut and watch you know and that that's what i do so that's what got me where i'm at I knew uh, I'd ask a lot of guys questions and a lot of guys don't tell you shit. They'll sit there and hoard their little secrets like it's some kind of, uh, you know, Solomon's key to the, the fortune or something. But I mean, it is to some people. But to me, I'm out here trying to just share what I know. And if anything, learn from other great guys out there. There are great guys that will tell you what they know. But you just got to be you got to just ask one time. Don't ask a million times. That's, <laughs> that's the worst thing I see them get asked the same question a million times. Like, so I don't know. No, no worries. Go ahead and finish your thought and then I'll come with what I was going to say. If I had an advice, any advice for any like young guys out there that happen to hear this, my advice to you would be just uh, go to YouTube, enter customizing tutorials and just watch a couple of days of it. You know what I mean? Just watch different things. Uh from the breakdown to the to the ideas, the Craig Warwick's and all his great plannings, the the Glenn Webbs and the just to get down to it and do it style. That's kind of like what I liked about him. He would just grab it and go. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of guys. Uh, Clay Orr had the great the one the one thing that really got me into t uh, customizing was Clay Orr's tutorial on action figure breakdown. I saw this guy was like breaking down a cool figure, cussing and making jokes the whole way. And I was like, man, this is pretty cool. Those guys seem like some cool dudes to to chat with. You know, I was in the in-between things, trying to find my little, refine myself in a way, like sticking to myself a lot. And I found this little community I'm in now. And uh, fortunately, there's a lot of good guys like you out there that talk, but there's a lot of tools too. So we get them both ways, you know, and uh, just try to, Try to be cool and don't fuck nobody over and you'll have a good long stand in this community, you know, and just be good to your word and, you know, beyond I just that's what it is, man. Just being a cool person in general. And you'll have a lot of cool people in this uh, community that will uh, help you out finding things. You know, there's all kinds of things that we do for one another, another in this community. So, yeah, I just basically it's cool being a, a customizer and a collector yeah they kind of go hand in hand and uh one of the reasons i started this podcast is i know there's a lot of guys a lot of young cats that want to get into action figure photography or acba what is that articulated comic book art and uh customizing and things like that yep. and i was one of those guys a couple of years ago that was looking for tips from guys and i just kept hitting walls with the guys that i admired and then you know that kind of discourages you so one of the things i will say is since i've started the sunroom i've come into not just you i mean i've known you for years but i've clay Orr, i've known him for years and he dropped him pounds you mentioned i do have a spider hulk custom from him which is really well made and uh it, Pounds will share some information with you. You will. Clayor is pretty good at it. But there have been a lot of people in the sunroom that have joined that I didn't even know had creative content. Uh, Derek Stringer and Boba Chuck. And they're 
down to earth guys that are willing to sit and talk like you. And I figured doing something like this would give some other people, some of those younger cats, some inspiration and let them know that there are people you can go to with the point that you said of, you know, don't ask me a thousand times the same thing. It's kind of like what your job, don't ask your boss a thousand times the same question because it seems like you're not paying attention. Yeah, I mean, it's out there if your eyes are open, man. You know, if I mean, I, I would say that it, it can take a little bit. I mean, it's a dangerous thing. You're messing around with uh, razor blades and power tools and and fumes and all kinds of other things that people take for granted. You know, I've busted myself wide open many times, you know, just trying to crack a torso, jamming an ice pick into my palm. You know, it's all kinds of stuff that occurs, you know. Uh, it's definitely not the safest hobby that I've ever started, but overall, the outcome when you finish something is very... Uh, it's very, I guess the word would be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, rewarding. Yeah, that's the one. Sorry about that. I'm having a brain fart over here. But uh, yeah, I mean, to young guys out there, I mean, they're already probably kit bashing and slapping different heads on different things and different equipment and accessories and stuff. That's kind of where you want to start. You want to get in there and get your creative juices flowing with your imagination. You know, you do that when you're a kid. You take that gun and give it to this guy, that to that. It all starts there. You're customizing right there, whether you know it or not. Now, you want to get into it a little better, start painting things different. That's a little first step. You know, and then secondly, you want to start adding things to stuff. You're going to have to grab some clay. And then once you start combining all those things, you start looking at airbrush guns and then you got to relearn everything all over again. So, I mean, there's so many learning curves, but once you get just a few under your belt, your confidence is through the roof and you, you feel like you can do anything. But, you know, you have to also set your limitations, too. And that's where I get myself kicked in my butt a lot because I, I say I can make something and I get into it and I go, oh, shit, I don't know. But somehow by the universe's artistic powers, I get through it, you know, <laughs> your forearm, for example, you know, when you say, Hey, I need a forearm. I was like, Oh, sure. A little forearm action figure. No big deal. When I started drilling into the abdominal area, I started realizing like, how the hell am I going to get this peg to work? How, man, I'm going to just have his arms glued in here and not move at all. Like all these different, different variations of problems started presenting themselves until I started working through them. And I was just lucky. I got you know, there's so many times where I just get at the end of the day, I just I, I gently set the figure in the box and I hurry up and ship it to you. You know, I, <laughs> I just get lucky. You know what I mean? So I'm glad you were happy with it, dude. You really am. It, you take some great pictures. You've gotten some good uh, shout outs from the forearm that John Strand you mentioned earlier. I didn't realize he was on my friends list when I posted it. And he's the first one that commented going, isn't that Brandon Albert's forearm? So, you know, you yeah, I saw <laughs> Yeah, you can tell your art is out there and that there is, you know, the, the community base of it is where it relies and that people actually recognize each other and uh, figure it out, which is great. Definitely, dude. It is a good community. Like everything else, there are some people in there that really shouldn't be there, in my opinion. Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like that. I don't go out here and clown and riff people and 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 judge people for making mistakes and do things like that. I mean, there's a, some people are go a little too far with their commenting and things on some of our groups we're in, but we all know who they are and they all know who they are. So they're probably not going to be the ones listening to us. So that's good. Uh, at the same time, you know, it's, it's a great thing, but it, it could also be a problem. Like one of the things I'm facing now is when you start collecting, you have to, you have to find yourself into a spot where you don't, you don't, get plastic addiction all right brendan so you brought up plastic addiction i'm going to kind of stop you there and uh bring up that question what do you consider plastic addiction and uh do you have any advice for those guys out there struggling well mainly what i would suggest would be uh try to stick to your guns as far as what your favorites are i mean if you like x-men try to stay with x-men because being sucked into the loop of trying to buy everything that hasbro produces will have you in if your job is, I'm speaking on my own personal terms. I mean, I know I'm, I'm not talking about anybody, everybody, but like, I'm sure I'm talking about a few of us. Uh, it'll hurt your wallet. If you, you try to buy everything Hasbro produces. I mean, if considering if you have 500 figures, you're looking at $10,000 plus right there. So those guys with those massive collections that don't, it doesn't bother them at all. I mean, those, that's the, the goal of everybody that collects and it's kind of one of those things you see everybody's collection and you want that you know it's kind of like wow you know and it's it's obtainable but it's like at a at, a, at what cost you know so you have to be able to 
kind of balance out what you like. If you like the Avengers, I mean, they put out plenty of Avengers stuff. If you like Spider-Man, look at how much Spider-Man stuff there is. And especially this being the year of X-Men for me, I mean, I've gotten all of the stuff. So that's why I'm trying to say, I mean, just watch what you, you get and, you know, stick with what you like unless you like it all. And, you know, to each their own. I mean, just bottom line, if you're just first starting collecting, <clears throat> don't be... Uh, I guess to uh, I guess the word would be envious of other people's collection because that gets amassed through years of doing this. And you see guys that just start in a couple of weeks or months. They have a lot of stuff, but that's just that's buying a lot at once. So just take your time, build up your stuff slowly and it'll be a much better collection. And, and then you'll have room to pose them as well. <laughs> that's what I would suggest. Uh, you know, I like that. I agree with it. And I'd echo some of those uh sentiments with it because uh i can tell you <laughs> that ten thousand dollars sitting on your shelf isn't going to necessarily be ten thousand dollars on the return when you have to sell it i mean i've had to sell some stuff to pay bills and you know you sometimes you take a hit sometimes surprisingly that figure is now four or five times worth what you spent on it so you never know what's going to happen with your position in life, but enjoy what you have as far as your collection at the time. So one thing I've noticed recently as well, and I'm sorry, I know that the connection on this isn't that great. It seems we have a little bit of a lag. Uh, people in the group have been going after all this NECA stuff. And I know that you personally had found the NECA Casey and Raph Walmart two-pack. And now people are going crazy with all the uh, NECA stuff that was released on Target.com yesterday. What's your take on that? Because I've seen some guys actually go from grown men collectors to crying babies over it. I mean, that, that, uh, I mean, I had to do some serious, like, uh, strict hunting tactics to obtain that certain figure. And, uh, I actually went to Walmart on the, I guess the day before it was supposed to be released and had the, um, the NPC codes and, uh, talked to several of the managers and they was telling me that, yeah, we'll have one in tomorrow. So I went over to electronics and made myself known to them. And, you know, hopefully, you know, that due, due to COVID, they shut down uh, real early and they opened real, I guess, around seven. So I just hopped on it and got there about 645 and waited <laughs> till it opened up. And nope, it wasn't there. So they told me, hey, try tomorrow. So guess what? I got up again and I waited and it wasn't there again. So on the third day, I actually got in and was able to get one. And I, uh, I met another guy uh named jacob he was hunting them down as well and uh you know it's just it's funny when you bump into people doing the same thing you know you don't feel so weird <laughs> but at the same time uh as i was going to get them i noticed there were two on the shelves and they had another guy that was just out the blue he was holding one and i almost you know i wanted to run up and tackle him almost just to make sure he wasn't going to grab two so i was able to get one and he ended up being cool and made that purchase the same way but I don't collect NECA, so I really just was trying to get this because I knew it was going to be popular and I can get another trade down the line for a Marvel Legend, to be honest. Uh, so, you know, doing this uh, Sentinel being produced, uh, those of us that don't have disposable funds have been trying to, like, get rid of the things that we don't really need, per se, to be able to afford that $380 hit a year from now, you know what I mean? So. I, I, I did sell that NECA pack for non, a non-scalper fee just to make sure somebody that didn't have it was able to get it and got myself a little closer to taking that Sentinel hit on August 24th. So I was able to get rid of a few things and now I have myself one backed and that was kind of what I did for that. So it all worked out. Yeah, it's interesting when you go out hunting, you know, uh, it, I went out today and I had to get a couple things for the house and i took a peek at the toy area and I saw a guy in there with his young daughter looking at the Hot Wheels. <laughs> and whenever I see people kind of hunting, I kind of stop them and I'm like, hey, you know, did you look for this one or that one? So I asked him if he'd found the party wagon in Lake County, which is where I'm at in Illinois. And he had said he still hasn't found it. So, you know, I, I, I like how you brought up Jacob because it, it kind of, uh, that's how it is when you're out hunting. It's always fun to see somebody else, like you said, and then you kind of realize maybe you're not so goofy or goofy looking i know as we get older it feels weird going out there hunting for the newest toy <laughs> so it's funny i often use the guys because i don't admit it's me hunting it personally i say my son is an avid collector or my son's birthday is coming when i talk to the managers but you know maybe i i shouldn't do that's why my luck's so bad when i'm fibbing so <laughs> i don't know 
I just don't look like the, the guy when they look at me asking asking for when the <laughs> toy's coming out. And they look at me funny when I've done it before. So I've learned to do smoke and mirrors, you know, which it's cool because it works because my son does run out and do hunting with me. So it's really not such a, it's a little white lie more than anything else. Hunter like has been looking for this uh, spider girl action figure. Here's the DPCI. Do you know if you have it? So we've all used our kids. I mean, that's part of collecting and that's part of having a family is it makes it a little easier but you know i'm gonna start wrapping this up i do have one last question for you and i'd like to know if you uh would like to share anything about left hook customs uh what you do what your philosophy is you know just kind of get your name out there a little bit and give you an opportunity to uh i guess give a little spiel about brandon albert and uh where and how they can find you all right man i appreciate it you know i've never had to do this for myself personally but Hello guys, my name is Brandon O'Bear. I, I go by the AK of Left Hook Customs. I try to keep everything within means so everybody can enjoy having a piece of art on their shelves. Uh, my main focus is to try to do speedy turnarounds and you know my best is yet to come. Uh, I'm just out here beginning. I don't call myself a pro. I mean, I'm just, I'm just a little better than a beginner at this point in my uh, customizing career. So I feel like, you know, with a little help along the way, we all can just start making our own stuff. And that's really the point. It's just a fun thing to do once you start getting into it. And uh, along the lines of what I'm trying to offer, I mean, just if you guys want something unique with a different style, I have a little grittiness to me. I mean, that's the way I prefer them looking. So I try to make them like that. And uh, if you want something like that and a little something cool, just send me over the body that you want made on and then we'll work something out. And I have a pretty fast turnaround. Uh, Josh here has gotten a couple of pieces from me and uh, he's really made me proud of the way he reacts to him. And, you know, I, I, I don't see it that way. So, I mean, it's just cool that you get somebody like this guy here asking me some questions about stuff that I don't even feel worthy of answering. So, you know, I, that's what I'm here for. If you guys just want something cool, holler at me. I don't really uh, hit you for an arm and a leg. It's probably going to be less than a hundred bucks if you deal with me. So just uh, thanks, Josh, for this opportunity. And I really don't have a, a lot of, uh, answers to that question man because i don't get asked that so just help i guess work with me on that one guys <laughs> if you guys are looking for me i can be found on instagram at left hook custom figs uh i also have a page on facebook of course somebody you guys in the community have probably seen me it's just left hook with a i go my name is brandon obear just uh any kind of contacts and stuff message me if you have any ideas we can chat about it uh, I got a stuff of thing, a couple of things in front of things right now, so it might be about a month ahead of time. So, if you guys give me a little chance, then we can maybe work something out and get it put on the shelf. God bless everybody. All right, guys. So that was my time with Brandon Albert of Left Hook Customs. I hope you enjoyed it, Sunroom, and I will see you guys soon. Check out his work and.